all those in favor of watching this episode of Saints and Scripted, please show by the sign. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you've if you've been to to the church, I didn't know the sign was thumbs up. Sorry, you didn't give me the memo. I wasn't sure. Like last minute, I was like, "Is this kind of sacrilegious?" I don't know. So I was like, "If you've been to well, uh, what, one of our too. church ceremonies." <laughs> In one of our sacrament meetings, one of the things we do is the bishop will get up there, maybe a member of the stake, and they'll say, like, we're calling, giving this person a calling, and if they're here, they stand up, and then they're like, we would like, like, if you sustain this person in their calling, then, like, do so by the, the, the uplifted hand. And then everyone raises their hand like this. And if you're a new member, I remember on my mission, we would invite people to the church, and they would see this, and I was like... This is the most cultish thing we do. Like, like where it's because everyone's just like simultaneously like, whoosh, and like so stone faced. And then he's like, any he opposed by the same sign, and then it's like silent. And I'm like, thank you. So you may have seen that before. We're gonna talk about that. So this word sustain, sustain. We're talking about what Justin. The more just, you say it, the funnier it's sustain, sustain, sustain. It's self sustaining now. <laughs> so Justin just gave a great example of, of what we do when we sustain people in church. They give them the new calling or whatever. They ask, do people, are people okay with this? Yes, we sustain. That's the action of sustaining. Sustaining can also mean basically supporting or defending or I don't know, just kind of being respecting our leaders mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and we show that through our actions or how we feel. That's kind of another part of sustaining as well. Well, like personal example Last Sunday, I actually got sustained as a board missionary. Oh, fun. Yeah. So, yes, like I stood up. That's awesome. And they're like, they said my name, like, Caleb, you'll be a ward missionary. All those, like, to the science, they everyone put their hand up. And so it's like everyone in that ward is kind of agreeing, like, hey, if Caleb needs help with anything ward missionary-like, I'm going to help him. Like, I, I, he'll be great. He's going to support him as a ward missionary. And stepping forward, if he needs anything, I'm, I'm cool to help him and at any cost just to help him fulfill the calling it, yeah. and it's kind of like an extension of just like loving thy neighbor mm -hmm. you know and becoming like one in the body of christ it's like a physical manifestation of like yeah we're going to work together on all of our individual callings to just like help make god's kingdom work yeah it's, kind of, it's pretty beautiful mm -hmm. you know really like there's not necessarily like a commandment that we have to sustain people or or there's i don't even know if there's a scriptural precedence for the need to sustain people in sacrament. Um, like the act of sustaining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know if it's something Moses did. There's examples of being like, hey, do you support this person? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, but but really it kind of goes back to that idea of just um, solidarity, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, I, I think it's... Unity. Yeah. yeah. I think it's mostly just, like, a tradition in our church because back in, like, 1830 with Joseph Smith... Uh, it says here on April 6th, um, Joseph Smith asked everyone to raise their hands uh, unanimously uh, in a le like way of sustaining each member. So I think it's just he did it, and so everyone's like, all right, the prophet did it, so let's just <laughs> let's just keep doing it. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And if it's not broke, don't like fix it. Right. Um, kind of thing. And and I, I don't know, personally, it feels really good when I get, like, when you get a calling, yeah. and then everyone's like, we're here to support you. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it does. It's special, you know? So everything we've talked about right now has kind of been based on the ward level, mm -hmm. you know, but there's also, we have the opportunity to sustain our, gen like the general authorities, mm -hmm. like the 70s, the apostles and the prophet, um, every general conference. And that's more of a generic, like, you know, cause this is broadcast worldwide and they're just like, do you sustain them? And then whether you're at home or like a church building, you, you raise your hand, no one's checking, you know, it's just more of like a sign of like faith. But then here's the, the caveat, um, is that they always ask, ward or general level, is if anyone's opposed to the sustaining. You know, is anyone opposed to this person having this calling? Um, in the ward level, they'll be like, um, show by the same sign, which means you could raise your hand if you don't think this person should have that calling. And then on the on general church level, they'll just say, like, talk to your church leaders, you know, because the prophet can't see worldwide and be like, well, here's, you know. <laughs> and and also people will be like in the audience will be like, no, boo. And it's like, well, that helps no one, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> boo! 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 
the, the hecklers yeah. Yeah. out in the yeah. But that that is like the one thing is that like there is part of the sustaining where you can like show that you don't support someone. Mm-hmm. But where does like you may be asking, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah, because I've never in any sacrament meeting that I've been in seen somebody object right publicly. No. Same. Um, and you know, that probably doesn't happen too often, but there are probably situations where someone might, I don't know, maybe they know something about the person that's being called and they're like, this is not, they're super uncomfortable with it perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um, and in that case, I think a lot of people just go talk to the bishop about it that, yeah, privately. Like if, if you knew, like, because if, they if were you're like someone... standing in sacrament meeting and being like, no, yeah, uh, that's just. It seems a little, I mean, you can. You, you can, but, but it's, it's like public embarrassment. Not productive, and, and uh, yeah, it makes exactly. people feel bad. It's, it really it's, is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be awkward if you're just like any any other person the same sign. Someone says like this person did this this this. Like that would just be that super be awkward horrible. and weird. Yeah. And I wouldn't want that in my sacrament. Well, yeah, and then like if it's something really bad, like let's say you know this person is not mm-hmm. in good stuff, then you would probably want to talk to the bishop about that. Both that privately, anyways. Yeah. yeah. And then if it's something like maybe a little bit less, where you're like, mm, I know they've struggled with these things. I don't think they'll be good in that calling. Maybe they're working on it with the bishop. Mm-hmm. And so if you just do it publicly, then that's like, yeah, okay. Exactly. And then everyone else is uncomfortable. But if mm-hmm. you just bring it to the bishop, then he can be like, oh no, they're working on it. Or he can be like, oh, I, you know, I yeah. did not know that. Like, yeah, we need, you know, because I'm in a bishopric. I've given people callings. We know very little, you know, like we have conversations, we pray about it. And I'm like, yeah. You're in the bishopric? For a young single adult ward. Oh, yeah, nice. exactly. Oh, very cool. It's a very funny experience. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's just moments where like, well, we'll give someone a calling. And but I'm like, all I, I, need, I needed someone to play the piano. All I knew is that they played the piano. Yeah. And then they came to church every Sunday. And I'm like, I think they could do great in that calling. And we really need the help. You know, and if they're a murderer, I don't know. Sneaker did it once. He can do it again. <laughs> but if someone else knew, I would hope that they would come forward and be like, I'd rather they don't play the piano because, you know, they kill people. And I would have been like, whoa. You know? <laughs> that's a little extreme there. Though. <laughs> I just had to Hopefully think of an example that no one's experienced, you know? <laughs> right? Someone DMs us and is like, actually. Because I just don't want to say something and someone being like, are you judging me? Like... Yeah. I don't know how often this happens, but if someone accepts a calling and you as their friend already know that they've got so much on their plate, maybe they've got five kids and their spouse has like a really time consuming calling or something. It's fun because you're never lonely and you're never bored. And then it's stressful because sometimes they don't listen to you and they just act like animals. Would you ever go say something? On their behalf, maybe you should. Like, because like maybe I, they're they're saying yes because they feel it's important to yeah. accept the calling and whatnot. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Do I, you step in. I, I think is that crossing a line. I I would because like like you said with the bishopric, you don't really know yeah. much about personal lives. So if the person is just just says yes, they they don't want to say no because they don't want to disappoint. And then you as their friends like. This, they will literally like ruin them. Like they weren't. They don't have any time for this. Mm-hmm. I would pull uh, go aside. Like, hey, bishop, I just want to let you know that bring this to light. Um, maybe you can talk to them and just be like, it's okay to not accept the calling because I know right. you've got stuff going on. Yeah. Um, that's what I would do. I would just be like, hey, bishop, just just the FYI, this person's got A B C D going on. Maybe it's not the best for him, them. You can double check with them because mm-hmm. I don't want to overstep boundaries or whatever. But. That's, that's what I would do. I feel like yeah, I think that's good. In an interesting way, that's almost sustaining your leader and your friend. Yeah, you know, yeah like, even for though, sure. like whether or not you're sustaining them in the calling, just as like a, a friend and a member of you know the church, just being like, I'm gonna help you out. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. I've got your back. Yeah, um, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And kind of going off of that, that's a big thing. Part of sustaining is just maybe maybe it doesn't mean that you completely agree with everything that they do, but you give them the benefit of the doubt. And right. you are praying for them and maybe just showing, you know, I support you. Mm-hmm. Um, I support yeah. you in this. But, I mean, so that that kind of opens a whole other thing. Does sustaining somebody mean agreeing with everything right. they do? Mm-hmm. And does sustaining meaning, like, obeying as well? Right. Um, because as Latter-day Saints, we've kind of grappled with this for a while. We've got the prophet and we know we follow the prophet. Mm-hmm. 
But do we sing it from the day you're born? Yeah. You know, oh, like the prophet. <laughs> it's more like oh, the prophet because we're little kids. Yeah. You know, you know, like, but it's, it's, and like sometimes things are said by our leaders, mm-hmm. um, by apostles, or yeah. I don't know, our bishop or whoever, and and we might be taken off guard or quite not right. uh, agree. Yeah, I feel How like you sustain. There's there's two ways that people tend to respond, and they they tend to be the extreme of both ends, where it's like. People will either freak out and be like, everything this leader has ever said or done is wrong and they are wrong because of the one thing they said that they didn't agree with. Yeah. Then on the other hand, there's the members who are like, anything that leader has ever said or done is perfect and good no matter what because they're my leader in the church and I sustain them. And both of those... I think are missing the mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've I've been I've been the, on this end where I'm like anything goes. Anything goes. He's yeah, fine. I, have I forgive him. He could do whatever he wants. Like he's the prophet or the leader. But then I've had people who are like aggressive. But then when I've actually sat down and talked about it, we both kind of realize like, wait, it's kind of more nuanced than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's a little more complicated than that. I think that's why President Nelson talked about the importance of the ability to receive revelation. If you're truly trying to sustain somebody by praying for them and listening to what they say, but also um, trying to invite the spirit in your life, then I think that helps you kind of give them the benefit of the doubt where it's needed and also right. think like, oh, this is super important in my life and I should focus on this kind of like they met, like they counseled to do. Right. Mm-hmm. There's you, kind of a balance. Do you think it's ever appropriate if a leader does something that you don't agree with? Do you think it's appropriate to tell them that? Because I think sometimes there's an error in the church where it's like if the prophet does something yeah. or if a prophet or apostle says something that's maybe like racist. You know, like Let's just say it's like very obviously not a good thing to say. Do we... Do we hold them accountable? Yeah. Like yeah. Do, do we say anything or do we just like, oh, well, they're fine. Like we're all human. Mm-hmm. You know... Well, I think that's going to happen no matter what, especially yeah. these days with social well, media. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. like, yeah, probably. Maybe there's, I mean, like, there's got to be a be- like, there's got to be a better way than, like, Twitter wrecking people. Yeah, there's you know, a like, way. I don't think that's the answer, but. Yeah. I think you could just always just, like, just have a talk with your bishop. Just, like, have a meeting Yeah, with if it's a and, local leader, definitely. And, 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 like, just, like, sit down and just be like, hey, like, let's just, like, communicate, hash it out, like, to your fellow brethren or whatever it is. Like, but if it's, like, like prophets and like big general authorities then i think it's more so just like trying to like i don't want to like say like just ignore the bad stuff but kind of just also like remember like outweigh like the good versus the bad like they've done this they've done that kind of like what Mm -hmm. what is it and if if the bad somehow outweighs the good then maybe like step up and just like say something to stake president or Something. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. No, I'm, just, sure. I'm just like spitballing here, but I think I think you're right. I don't think you should give up the gospel. Yeah. Or, uh-huh. or give up that leader's like, good advice. We're all human, so it's like yeah. we're bound to make mistakes. We're not perfect. We we're bound to say something dumb or do something stupid. Like yeah, maybe and maybe it is like a social media post because that's the only way to get <laughs> higher up attention. That's you know, true. maybe yeah. it is just a respectful post. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. uh, hey, I loved all these things that you said, but this thing you said is uncomfortable for these reasons like yeah. Yeah. I would invite you to think about it more you know like yeah. maybe yeah, there's I like, that. Yeah. like I err on being pacifist and I don't think that's very loving because if you have charity for someone you're gonna you'll say uncomfortable you know like if you yeah, love someone and you I see know, them doing something that. that wrecks them and you're just like oh it's fine because having that conversation would be uncomfortable for me that's not real love yeah. when you really Man, love I'm someone I'm feeling called out right you know? now <laughs> <laughs> I felt that this moment I when I was prepping better. for this one I was like I need to improve because I, I, I want to be as comfortable as possible, but that's not always what real love is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there, there are always people who are pretty hurt by what's said. Yeah. How do we approach them? Like we show them love, like, Hey, I hear you. Um, yeah, that's a good, I, show them empathy as well, because mm-hmm. there's always a reason that someone feels hurt by something that we might un- not understand. Um, or we may feel the same way. It, like if I was hurt by something that a leader said, I would want to be shown love and empathy as well. Yeah. So that's also important to remember um, as we do our best to sustain our leaders and everything. But I, yeah, I think that's it. Just do your best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we answered statement. some questions about um, what what sustaining is. And obviously, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments or message like message us directly on like Facebook or Instagram. 
really appreciate you guys watching. And I think we're good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're chilling. Everybody we're have good. a good day. We're <laughs>